Hey guys, so recently I've received a lot of comments on my Instagram about how I was able to polish up this little medallion that I downloaded from Thingiverse. So I thought I'd share with you guys and show you guys really quick how I do it. So let's get started. Because the front of this has obviously been polished, I'm just going to work on the back side, which as you can see is somewhat rough pretty ugly looking and let's face it you wouldn't realize this was going to be a polished metal part shortly so start things off i like to grab myself a nice chunk of 180 grit you're going to want to start with a coarse sandpaper i would say 180 grit is probably about as coarse as you want to go anything coarser is just going to create more work than it's worth so what i do is i take put it down and apply some pressure and go in a circle. And there's no real set time limit, but the longer you spend with the coarse paper, the smoother it'll become. Do keep in mind that this stuff sands really quickly. But as you can see, it's got a lot more to go. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're already, we're done with the 180 and you can notice that the back is looking Pretty good, it's taken on a whitish tone, but you might not be able to tell on camera, but there is some metal particles starting to show. How much you wanna sand this is totally up to you, although I will say that um, while this stuff sands quickly, it will load your sandpaper up very quickly as well, so make sure you move around it a lot to make sure that you're actually cutting stuff and not just sitting in one spot thinking you're going places. Do check it occasionally though to make sure that you're not going to sand your model down too much. So when we're done with the 180, we're going to want to bump ourselves up the grit scale one notch and grab ourselves some 280, somewhere in this pile of sandpaper underneath here. So now what we're going to want to do is the same thing as with the 180, only this time we're probably not going to need to sand it this much. Already you can notice it's getting a bit more shiny and we're starting to get a little more of a... Uh, metal color in there, that's a good sign. So I'm now going to sand this a little more and then we'll jump ourselves up to the 500 grit. Oh yes, now we're really starting to get that metal particle showing. So time to jump to the 500. And when I jump to 500, I like to also bust out some soapy water. Reason why is because the higher the grit, the more likely it is to get clogged up. So take some soapy water here. I'm just using a paintbrush so I don't make a mess and apply it down there. Honestly, drop a soap to a bit of water. It doesn't take much. We're just trying to cut the surface tension and also lubricate a little bit so that way the part slides smoothly. So sand a little bit with this and grab ourselves a little rag so we can wipe this off real quick. And hopefully you guys can tell that this is starting to get, starting to get a more shine going on. You can't see any of the imperfections anymore, so I'm gonna say let's jump up to 800. As before, we're gonna use a little bit of soapy water on here. And when, also, when you get up into the high grits, you're also gonna want to not use as coarse of a pressure. You're going to want to use less pressure on the part. One other thing you'll notice is that the water tends to darken the color of the material. So if you really want to check your progress, just wait a minute, let it dry off, and you should be good. Oh yeah, that thing is really getting shiny back there. That's awesome. So now I'm going to jump ourselves up to my 1500 grit. One thing I will note is some hardware stores may or may not carry higher grit sandpapers. So if your hardware store does not carry it, ask if your local auto parts store does as really high grit sandpapers are usually used for sanding cars when painting. So as before, we're just gonna use some light pressure on here and just let the sandpaper buff up 
the metal particles that are. And one thing to keep in mind is that this is a plastic and metal blend. So you're never gonna be able to get it as shiny as a solid metal model, but you still should be able to get it, you know, relatively shiny for what it is. Let's face it, 3D printing a model sure is cheaper than getting it cast. So here it is after the 1500, it's looking good and shiny. So let's just jump to the 2000 really fast and then we'll wax this guy up. And if it is possible for you to get your hands on sandpapers over 2000 grit, by all means do it. I've seen, okay, I'm gonna call that good on the back there. Dry it off. And for the final step, I like to use a product called new finished. The trick that I've found that works really good is to take just a tiny bit, not much, and apply it to the back. Loosely apply it to the back. Nothing fancy here. We're just trying to get it on there and let it dry for about, say, oh, minute or two or three. I would say that's probably had sufficient time to glaze over. What I do is I stick my finger into the rag and pull it back very tightly so I can get a firm grip on it. And I take my finger and applying moderate pressure, I rub the back of the model. This is nice and easy because it's flat. And I'm pretty much just trying to work off the excess material and also work it into the model. So with that, We've pretty much effectively polished and, in a sense, you could say protected the back of this little model. And that's what the front looks like. And for comparison, this is what it looked like when it started, pretty much. So, huge transformation if you asked me. It didn't take more than like 10 minutes. So I hope that helps you guys out and I hope it demystifies the process of polishing a little bit. It can be time consuming, but the results speak for themselves. I mean, what would you want to wear more? Something dull or something shiny? Okay, guys, till next time. See you later. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Make It With Calvin. If you did, please feel free to leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, like and share this video with your friends. If you want to keep track of what I'm doing between episodes, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I have links in the description down below. So until next time, have fun and stay safe.